Hello and welcome. So today we are going to talk about how to perform the linearity. As we know that the linearity is one of the parameter out of many another during the method validation. So let us understand you know what is the requirement given by the ICH guideline and what is the requirement given by the Envisa Brazil's guideline. So if you look at the another regulators like the MHRA or US FDA, TGA, they almost follow the ICH guidance. But when it comes to NVISA, I have found there are certain differences in between ICH and NVISA. So in today's talk, we are going to understand what are those differences or similarities as per as the linearity study is concerned. So now these are the guidance, right? The ICS guideline for analytical method validation is what? Validation of analytical procedures, text and methodology Q2R1. When it comes to Envisa Brazil, now this is the guidance, right? The resolution of College 8 board, uh, RDC 166 of July 24, 2017. So this presentation is built onto these two important guidance document. Let us first understand the definition of linearity as per the ICH and the NVISA. So ICH says that an ability to obtain test results which are directly proportional to the concentration of analyte in the sample. So there is a response which is directly proportional to the concentrations is called as the linearity according to the ICH. As per NVISA, an ability to obtain analytical responses directly proportional to the concentration of an analyte in a sample is called as a linearity. So there is no much difference between the definition per se. Now what is the requirement mentioned by the ICH? Now to establish the linearity, a minimum of five concentrations is recommended by making a single stock solutions and further diluting it to a required concentration levels. As per as NVISA is concerned, to est for establishment of linearity at least five different concentrations of CRS prepared independently in at least triplicate must be used. So there is a need of preparation of five different concentration levels by making CRS certified reference standard uh, in at least triplicate. So you need to weigh the reference standard in three different weights independently, make the stock solution and then out of these three independent stock solutions you can further prepare five different concentration levels. Now this is the significant difference between the ICH and NVISA. ICH talks about only single stock preparation and then preparing the five concentrations out of that. Whereas NVISA talks about preparation of three different stock solutions and making the three different linearity solutions at the five different concentrations level. Now what is the evaluation criteria? As per as ICH is concerned, you need to evaluate correlation coefficient, y-intercept, slope of the regression line and residual sum of squares. When it comes to NVISA, you need to investigate coefficient of correlation and determination that is R and R square, then dispersion of residues as well as NVISA also talks about evaluation of angular coefficient and the angular coefficient should not be, I mean the angular coefficient shall be significantly different from zero. NVISA also talks about evaluation of homoscedasticity and in line with that you need to also investigate the uh, statistical significance level of 5%. So when you look at the guidance provided by ICH or NVISA, both the guideline talks about you know the regression line plotted by least squares method. You need to use the least squares method for plotting the linearity line. 
Now, what is meant by least squares method and what it does? So, in least squares approach, the sum of squares of residuals is minimized. You need to draw a linearity line out of your five different concentrations level in a such a way that there will be a minimum residuals across all these five different concentrations. Now, let us understand what is meant by residuals. So, a residual is the difference between an observed value and a predicted value in a regression analysis. So, you have got some observed values for the five different concentration levels and then you have draw a linearity graph. Now, linearity graph will consider the least squares approach and then you will get certain line over there and your observed value can be onto the exact line or they cannot be onto the exact line. So, in the given diagram, you know, you will find that the observation number 2 is 4 points away from the actual predicted response. The next point, which is point number 3, is almost minus 2 away from the uh, predicted response. So, these deviations, these differences between the observed value and predicted value is called as the residuals. So, how one, how one can calculate the predicted value? Just by using the y is equal to mx plus c. So, this mx plus c is your predicted value. And then calculate the residual sum of the squares for the observed residuals. The next parameter is also bias at 100%. Now, what is the bias means? It's a deviation between the observed value and the predicted value at 100% concentration. So, calculate the percent bias by using the calculation formula which is y observed minus y predicted divided by y predicted into 100. The next parameter is the homoscedasticity. So, if you break this word in two, that is homo stands for same and sadistic means the scatter. So, what is particular regression model assumes that your residuals are hmm, the same for lower concentration as well as the higher concentration. But is that the scenario practically available? So that is the assessment you need to do. Whether your residuals are spread, you know, similarly across the plot. And that assessment is called as the homoscedasticity. There is another important point NVISA talks that is the angular coefficient. Now the angular coefficient is nothing but the slope or the sensitivity of the method. See, the NVISA has mentioned this parameter to understand your sensitivity of your method. Means how your response is increasing with the increase in the concentration. Now onto the uh, plot, you know, you will see method A and method B. For method A, the slope is A equal to 1, whereas for method B, the slope A is equal to 2. So, you can clearly understand that method B is more sensitive as compared to method A. So, based on to the angular coefficient, you can easily understand the sensitivity of method A across the method B. NVISA also talks about the calculation of 5% significance level. So, you plot the graph of let us say amount versus response and then you need to convert your response into a relative response with the calculation formula of response divided by amount and then also convert your amount into a log term and then you know draw a graph of log amount versus relative response. You will get the horizontal line. Now draw a parallel horizontal lines on the graph corresponding to 95% and 105% of the horizontal line. The method is considered linear up to the point where the plotted relative response line intersects the 95% and 105% line. So you can see that you know the horizontal lines uh, onto the left and right. Hmm, in between region that is actually the linear range for your method. Now as far as the limits are concerned, you know, 
when you look at the ICH, the ICH has not proposed any limit for correlation coefficient or the R. But NVSA has proposed a limit of your R value should be above 0.990. Now, if you ask me the industry trend and practices for assay by chromatography and UV, the limit of correlation coefficient of not less than 0.999 is mostly followed. For dissolution by chromatography and EV, the limit is not less than 0 0.999 and for related substances or a residual solvent uh, by chromatography, the limit of not less than 0 0.997 can be followed. Now this, uh, there is one more guidance available into the USP General Chapter 1092 which talks about method development and validation for dissolution. So from the reference of 1092 general chapter, the square of the correlation coefficient for dissolution method is what should be greater than or equal to 0.98. It has also been followed in the industry that the correlation coefficients results shall not be rounded off. So whatever results you get, you must report that value. I hope you now must be clear on to the conducting the linearity study for uh, your method according to ICH and NVISA. You must have also understood what are the similarities and what are the differences between ICH and NVISA. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will meet you soon with such kind of useful and informative videos. 